Hello everyone. The final section of Module 4, our longest module yet, is 4.5 Quantitative Chemical Analysis. Um, there are some learning objectives here, and um, I'm not going to read through them in as much detail um, because uh, what you will need to know here, uh, for the most part, we will be covering in lab in terms of the techniques of the procedures themselves. Um, I did want to say a little bit about them, and I also wanted to point out that there are some great examples in this uh, section of your book on solving uh, problems that have uh, stoichiometry involved. And we can kind of see how this works in the lab in this uh, section, and we'll see how it works in the lab in the lab uh, very uh, very soon if we haven't already done so. Um, when we are looking at um, the kind of the types of calculations that we do in stoichiometry and applying that to some things that we do in the lab, we can call that a, a quantitative analysis. Um, so this is something where we're determining a property of something by analyzing it in the lab. Oftentimes, what we'll be determining the property of is a, is a, a concentration of a mixture of things. Um, so there's a few ways that we can do that. Um, this is different than what's called a qualitative analysis, and we'll be doing some of that as well this semester and quite a bit of it in the second semester. Um, in a qualitative analysis, you're looking at, say, the color of something, and from that, you'll make a determination. Whereas here, we're looking at um, making measurements, doing calculations in order to determine something about what we have. Uh, the most common type of quantitative analysis is a titration. Um, we will be doing some titrations a bit later this semester. And a titration is a way of determining an unknown concentration um, based on the reaction with something of a known concentration. Um, so we're showing the uh, setup of a titration down here. So this is called a burette. And um, typically how a titration works is you will fill the burette with uh, something that you know quite a bit about. So you something that you know um, basically is concentration. Um, this is called the titrant. So the burette is filled with the titrant. And then we add um, that titrant to something um, we're trying to measure, um, and that something we put in the um, flask underneath the burette, and that's called um, the analyte. Um, we mix those together, and ideally, uh, we have a way of figuring out when that reaction has completed. Um, and if we can do that, and we can figure out how much we used of uh, the titrant in order to completely react with the, the uh, analyte, uh, then we can do some calculations and determine the concentration of the analyte. Um, if we can stop exactly where we want to, um, we call that the equivalence point of the titration. Um, in order to do that, we often need to have a way of showing us that we're, we're there, we're at the equivalence point, um, so we use dyes called indicators that will often change colors based on selecting properties such that they match what happens at the equivalent at or near the equivalence point. Um, the actual measured place when we stop is called the end point. And we assume that the end point and the equivalence point are close enough together that when we do that calculation, we'll end up with the right result. Um, there are lots of different types of titrations that can be done. Um, acid base are the most common. Um, next semester, though, we'll be doing some redox titrations um, and some other possibilities. Uh, for now, you don't have to worry about how do you figure out what are the right indicators and how everything matches together there. It's more about correctly doing the procedure and then, uh, which we'll do in lab, and for now, that we know how to uh, do a calculation. Um, so there's an example here of a 
titration analysis um, that I'd recommend you uh, take a look at from your textbook. Um, one thing I'll note, so the um, kind of the, the roadmap here of how to do this um, is that we are using molarity as a conversion factor. Um, uh, and we're also finding a concentration. And so this step is going to be a little bit different in that you are looking for a concentration. Um, so that is technically not a, um, not a conversion factor. It's using the definition. Um, so you can kind of see how they walk through that here. So, so please take a look at that question um, because this is something you'll, you'll uh, need to be able to do potentially for the exam and definitely later in, in the lab. So that's an example of a titration question. Um, we can also have what's called a gravimetric analysis. Um, in a gravimetric analysis, um, you will have some change of state um, such that you end up with um, typically a solid that you can isolate and by finding the mass of that solid, maybe figure out some things that happen. Um, this uh, procedure is a little bit uh, tricky in that you have to get a pure sample of that uh, final product and often there'll be things like water that will try to will contaminate that a little bit. So it's a little bit trickier to get good results here without using um, kind of extended um, testing. And we, we will do something that's a little bit like this in lab. Um, so that's called a gravimetric analysis. And here's an example of a gravimetric analysis uh, calculation. Um, um, you'll notice that you're, here you're given, in this case, in this particular case, you're given a, a mass to start with and um, you're given a mass at the end that you found. Um, and so you're, you'll be doing some stoichiometry here. And then because you're given two masses, in this case, you'll be finding a percent yield. Okay, so you can look at that example as well. And then the final one here is not one that we will really do in the lab, but it's one to be aware of. And this is called a combustion an analysis. Uh, for many combustion reactions, the products will be uh, carbon dioxide and water. Um, potentially other things could be present, but in many cases that those are the only things that we really care about. And so if you know that those are the products, you can have a reaction where you put oxygen in, uh, you, your reaction takes place, and then you have a way of collecting the water, and then a way of collecting the carbon dioxide. And if you do a perfect job of collecting all the water here, all the carbon dioxide here, anything else is escaping, you can figure out um, how much carbon dioxide you made, the mass of the carbon di uh, mass of carbon dioxide here, mass of the water here, and uh, you know, you'll have whatever your mass was over here. And from there you can do some calculations to figure out the identity of what you formed based on the relative masses of those three things. Um, that's a little bit more advanced than we'll be getting into in the lab, but you can see an example here of how, you, how someone might go about doing that sort of a calculation. Um, so again, a little bit more advanced than we need, uh, definitely for lab, but you might see some homework questions related to this. Um, so that is it. That is it for module four, uh, the longest module that we will have this semester. Uh, please make sure you are mastering the concepts of stoichiometry. They will continue to be important as we move on to Module 5.